Thank you, Mary. Uh, let me begin by introducing the other members of our panel. Uh, we've got Jeremy Banta, who's a assistant professor and program coordinator of supply chain management at Columbus State Community College in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Jeremy is also a PI for the collaboration of Midwest professionals for logistics engineering technology education project. Uh, we'll be referring to that as the complete grant. Uh, with Jeremy is Chris Dennis, who's the lead supply chain management instructor, also from Columbus State, and uh, also works on the complete grant. And then the fourth member of our panel is Dr. Ned Young, who is a professor of management at MIS at Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. Ned and I are both co-PIs on the National Center for Supply Chain Automation, and we uh, are collaborators in the complete grant as well. We'd like to provide you with uh, some of the history of these various projects that address technology training for supply chain technicians. Uh, in July of 2016, our original National Center PI, Kevin Fleming, who you saw narrating that uh, video during the break, suggested that I attend a supply chain technology conference at Navy Pier in Chicago. It was the summer of the Pokemon Go phenomenon, and everybody at the conference was trying to figure out how to plant marketing tools along the Pokemon paths so, so that the game players could transform into paying customers. Anyhow, I, I visited the expo and I met um, staff from Columbus State and they were promoting their logistics engineering technology curriculum. And it was a way to implement IT curriculum into supply chain, which is something that Ned Young and I were very interested in. Uh, Ned and I, along with Jeremy and Chris, submitted NSF proposals to continue that work. And how those efforts have uh, interacted with the National Center is basically our story. Uh, we're going to ask uh, the Columbus State people to talk first, and I believe uh, Chris Dennis was going to uh, begin the discussion. Chris? Yes, thank you very much, Bob. My name is Chris Dennis, and like Bob said, I'm with Columbus State Community College. And today, uh, Professor Banta and I will be talking about logistics engineering technology, the program, why we started the program, as well as Jer uh, Professor Banter will speak about the complete grant. So uh, first, there's a lot of confusion always when you bring up the word logistics or supply chain management. So let's uh, define the word logistics. Logistics is a part of the supply chain process that plans, implements, and controls the efficient and effective forward and reverse flow of goods and services. Really, uh, logistics is the moving part of the supply chain. Um, in Columbus, the reason why that's so important, and I can tell you that it's, it's very important. We see new distribution centers coming up all the time. We have a huge uh, distribution center park around Rickenbacker Air Force Base in Groveport or Southern part of Columbus. There's distribution centers uh, in West Jeff, just on the west side of Columbus, a large park, as well on the right side of Columbus. There's uh, a lot of your uh, clothing and designer brands, Bath and Body Works, L Brands, all those, and as well as there's a Facebook uh, center out there in Google. Uh, Columbus is growing. Why is Columbus growing? Well, it has a lot to do with these, the location. In Columbus, we are a 10 hour drive uh, away from 47% of US manufacturing capacity, 48% of US uh, headquarter operations. And we're that same 10 hour drive away from about 30% of the Canadian uh, manufacturing capacity. That's what makes Columbus and Central Ohio, what makes logistics and namely logistics engineering technology or technicians, or as called earlier, supply chain automation technicians. That's what makes them important here. Now, these are the, some of the companies that are in and around the Columbus area. Um, it accounts for a large portion of our employment in this region is in supply chain and logistics. 9% of the jobs in this area are in this sector. Some of these same companies, large companies, came to Columbus State and we invited them in uh, to tell them, or to ask them rather, what, what do you need? What, what can the college do better for you? 
um, and they asked for the LET program. Uh, Central Ohio is home to one of the largest and fastest growing supply chain sectors. Uh, there's the 9% uh, figure that the supply chain sector accounts for. And these are good jobs. Median career earnings between 50 and $70,000 per year. Really high paying jobs for people with, with two year degrees. Um, so what we did was we, we partnered with over 20 of these uh, companies and they wanted us to prepare supply chain managers that also had not only their supply chain curriculum, but also had some engineering capabilities as well as IT capabilities. So we developed this hybrid model and I'll go through the classes with you that the LET technicians take. Uh, but the, they take these classes through both in-person and online formats. There are only a few classes that are, are done in person, and that's because they need to be in a lab setting. Um, we have uh, an IST lab where our students are able to work with equipment, learn basic electrical troubleshooting. Uh, we also have a, uh, a classroom that is outfitted with trainers for these students. And these trainers help the students learn how to wire circuits, also uh, troubleshoot circuits, and also work with PLCs to understand how to program and use ladder logic. Um, and the LET technicians all get classwork in these areas. Um, there's also an embedded internship, not for all students in the program, but we took an existing model of, uh, it's, we call it the modern manufacturing work study, and it's where students will go to class and take some specific coursework in the first year to make them valuable to these area, these 20 employers. And then in the second year of their program, they are working part-time and in, in making a really good wage, as well as going to school part-time. And these students are able to graduate a lot of times with absolutely no debt and a really high percentage of the time, I've heard 98%, they're offered a, a full-time employment after their internship. So uh, the first year, the LET student, this is not the modern manufacturing work study model. This would be just the classes that an LET student coming in would take. Uh, it would get adjusted a little bit for the modern manufacturing work study students. But uh, you can see in here, they're getting some pl supply chain management coursework. Uh, they get a supply chain management principles class, as well as inventory management. But they're also in that first year, getting some engineering basics in ENGT 1200. That's more about industrial engineer methodologies such as Six Sigma. Uh, they learn about just in time. They learn about uh, total productive maintenance, TPM and that. So in the second year, they'll get into more hands-on engineering training. But you, you can also see some uh, IT coursework. They're getting some Excel experience in the first year and they're getting some int an introduction to programming logic. In the second year, the students in the engineering part of the program, they get in, into much more detail with intro to electrical mo electric motor controls and PLCs. This is where they're learning, their, they're using the trainers and they're taking field devices and wiring the field devices up to the trainers and uh, they're seeing how they can make things work and they're learning ladder logic in order to put those circuits together. And finally, in the latter part of that class, they're learning how to take what they've already learned, how to actually wire the circuits. And then instead of wiring, they're using a PLC to use uh, utilizing the ladder logic to make the uh, circuits work. They're also taking an IT course in logistics in log IT and logistics course, still have your basic supply chain management, warehouse management here. And um, there's also a mix of IT courses, industrial network communications and data acquisition systems. So we feel that this is a, a well-rounded 
uh, program where they get equal uh, classroom time in all three disciplines. And we have some ideas about taking uh, the newly, the, the new MSSC certifications, CLT and supply chain automation, trying to integrate that coursework into two, our two engineering classes so that the students also have the ability upon graduation to test for those certifications. Um, what careers exist in this field? Well, I could tell you in Columbus, and I would imagine in, in most major metropolitan areas, there are a lot of openings in the supply chain. Uh, logistics engineering technicians or supply chain automation technicians, supply chain managers, systems analysts, operations analysts. We've had uh, graduates of this program who were actually hired as safety specialists. And some, we, we also had a graduate of the program that ended up at IT in a distribution center. So there's a lot of titles that you could get after uh, finishing up this degree. Now, in our programs at Columbus State Community College, Professor Bantas and I, we offer these degrees and certificates. Uh, logistics Engineering Technology, that's uh, our newest degree. It's a, a more STEM related associates degree, but we have International Commerce SCM certificates, as well as Supply Chain Management and International Commerce Associates, Supply Chain Management Associates, and the LET degree. Next, Professor Banta will talk to you about the complete grant. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, calling me Professor Banta uh, makes me sound old, um, <laughs> but thank you. Um, so before I, I talk about the current grant, um, I'm gonna go back a little bit and talk about the two preceding grants just a bit, much like uh, watching Marvel movies. Uh, it always makes more sense if you know the background. Um, so our first grant established the LET program. And as Chris alluded, uh, this was done through a lot of industry input and feedback. So we didn't even know it was gonna be called LET um, until you know, we were part of the way through the process. Uh, that grant went so well, and we were, were so happy with the LET curriculum that we designed, we put another proposal in and got a second uh, NSF grant uh, that moved that LET program into the work study model, uh, which is uh, where students go to school for the first year. Uh, and then during the second year are partnered uh, with uh, one of our partner companies uh, where they work part-time um, and then uh, go to school part-time as well. And then the third grant, uh, which takes us even further, uh, is the complete grant. Uh, and we hope there'll be a fourth. We have a couple ideas and some good proposals uh, for the future uh, on those as well. Um, the grant's primary goal is to share what we learned in the previous two grants with others, uh, specifically Sinclair College and Oakton Community College, uh, but also through a network um, and through a lot of other venues as well. Uh, so there's four deliverables on the grant. The first deliverable um, basically is led by Columbus State and revolves around the dissemination of information um, from the prior grants, as well as what's going on currently. Uh, so we do this with our formal partners, as well as through continual outreach locally um, and nationally at events like this one. The second deliverable, and this one I'll focus on a little bit more, um, even though all three schools are doing this, um, it kind of revolves around a network. So it makes sense that, that the three schools kind of work on this uh, together and also on their own. Um, it revolves around creating this network. And when the grant had been proposed and the deliverable had been written, uh, we weren't 100% sure what that network was going to look like. We, wanna kinda, we wanted to kind of dig into it and see where it went. Um, well, through exploration, we realized schools like The Ohio State University, which is just up the road from us, um, have advisory boards at their college level um, or at the school level, like for the business college but they didn't have advisory programs for their individual programs. Um, Ohio State has a master's of business of logistics engineering. And the, the gentleman that runs that program uh, didn't have an advisory board to get input on his program specifically. So we thought a network might be able to help replicate that uh, while also ensuring local schools were all on the same 
page when it came to delivering supply chain uh, management education. So we formed the Ohio Supply Chain Academic Network. And our primary goal is to connect the Ohio supply chain management industry with academic partners, both at the higher ed level and at the K through 12 level. Um, you can see here some of our current partners. Um, we not only have industry members and academic partners, uh, but we also have what I like to call supply chain adjacent partners, uh, like Ohio Department of Veteran Services, Battelle, Columbus Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Regional Airport Authority, and Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. We've been in existence for two years and pre-pandemic had some really good local speakers um, while also creating some really good partnerships. Uh, Post-pandemic, we've obviously gone to virtual um, and made our meetings more of working type meetings, uh, but we're hoping to get back to the uh, in-person. Uh, and we've also kind of branched out uh, into uh, hosting some events on our own as well. A K through 12 partner asked us to work with them for a virtual event connecting K through 12 students with recent college graduates to talk about uh, different careers within logistics and supply chain management. So the third deliverable is led by Oakton. Uh, it revolves around educating faculty uh, and Columbus State's actually looking to replicate some of the programs that Oakton has created. And the fourth deliverable revolves around prior learning assessment. At Columbus State, we've modeled what Sinclair has done uh, and we continue our work in this area. So that's a, a quick down and dirty of what we're doing at Columbus State. Um, if you have any questions about our program, feel free to reach out to either of us. And now I'll be followed by Ned from Sinclair. Ned. Thank you, Jeremy. So as was mentioned, um, we are now uh, in the National Center in our 10th uh, year anniversary. Uh, so we wanted to give you a little bit of background of um, where we started and where we are now. So um, for this particular uh, presentation, I'd like to talk to you about a few things. Um, we're gonna talk about how we started. Uh, when we began, uh, by the way, in 2011, we were called the National Center for Supply Chain Technology Education. Um, we did several things, created a model program, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, created a, a course in the e-textbook uh, on the introduction to automated warehouse. Um, we went through for about five years, and then in 2016, we reapplied with the National Center and were re-upped for five more years, and we rebranded ourselves then the National Center for Supply Chain Automation uh, to kind of bring it into uh, what we're seeing today in the supply chain. So when we began in 2011, Kevin Fleming, uh, who you saw in the video, and he will be our keynote speaker. Many of you probably know Kevin or have heard him speak or maybe read his books and videos. Um, Vince Donato from uh, Jefferson Community College, he's now running uh, the GIS Center and still a good friend of the center, uh, probably many of you know Vince as, as well. Uh, Erica Bowles out of Tacoma, uh, Washington began with us, she has since retired, and then we still have kind of the two bad pennies here, uh, Bob Sampolsky and, and myself. So this was the original model program that we developed. Um, we call it a model program um, because it gives a reference to the various um, uh, colleges as to what the skill sets are required. And much like Jeremy mentioned, the industry involvement in let industry was really the driver of this particular model program. We had industry uh, members from across the nation uh, met several times, met physically, uh, met electronically and develop this. And as you can see, this uh, curriculum is very mechatronics oriented. So we have the, the mechanics and the electronics, hydraulics, pneumatics, kind of the core part of a supply chain uh, automation technician. Um, in 2016, when we reapplied, we had a little different change in, in the participants. Colleen Malko at the time was the PI. She has since retired and Valerie Piper, who you met earlier, is now our PI. Uh, we were able to bring Jamie Dale in, uh, who, who's uh, become a really important member of the, of the team. He's at uh, Central Piedmont in North Carolina. And then there's the two bad pennies are still around, Bob and my, myself. 
So this year, um, we've worked, uh, it had several Zoom meetings with our industry partners across the country and talking about the new technologies, somewhat based on some of the technologies that Chris and Jeremy were talking about, the importance of having uh, newer technologies in the model program. So this is our, our new model program, and we're gonna uh, jump into this a little closer. Um, first, there were several courses that we didn't make too much of change to. So things like the general mechanics and the microprocessors, math, the uh, welding, hydraulics, pneumatics, those are really still uh, very core foundational to the, uh, the technician. But we did have to make some changes to certain courses. For example, the introduction to the automated warehouse with all the newer technologies dealing with networking and whatnot. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, we uh, combined our ACDC courses together, did some changes on the OSHA. And this gives you a little bit of an idea with the OSHA, we decided to implement the OSHA uh, 30 so that a student that went through that course uh, could uh, sit then for the certification for the OSHA 30. In the PLCs, um, there's been a lot of work on variable frequency drives or VFDs. So we've added uh, more information about that. Uh, we combined the AC and DC courses. They had been separate courses, but we felt like it was important um, to highlight the, the two of those together. So we did that. And then um, the, probably the biggest addition to the whole was is in the introduction to automated warehousing course, where we've added networking, uh, robotics, uh, much of the robotics that uh, Jason and, and uh, Patty were talking about, and cybersecurity. Three new courses, introduction to networking, uh, the IoT cybersecurity, and the robotics. So these are th three new courses in our model program, and we'll break these out just a little bit uh, in more detail here for you so you can see. Um, you'll get copies of, of these, but in the um, in the introduction to computer networking, we thought it's important for the supply chain technicians to understand some of the topologies that they're going to be dealing with in the network, realizing that there are probably IT specialists that are going to be setting up these networks and things, but there will be troubleshooting that's going to need to be uh, had. So uh, understanding a little bit about Ethernet and the standards, um, wireless has become so important now uh, with what um, Jason and Patty were talking about with the AMRs, all that's driven now by wireless technology. So the, the focus is going to be on troubleshooting um, and, and how a technician would, would manage that, that network. Um, the next slide is an outline, uh, just kind of give you an idea of the topics that we're talking about. But again, as, as the last point there makes, we're looking at troubleshooting and support for these, these networks. So then the next course uh, deals with uh, the Internet of Things. Um, we've seen, I, I think the biggest change I've seen in the 10 years that I've worked with the center has been the introduction of, of IoT devices. Um, companies are finding many different types of devices, whether they be cameras or or security kind of uh, devices, or we've seen a lot of HVAC kind of devices now in, in cold storage areas and that sort of thing. These being uh, implemented in the, in the warehouses and distribution centers. And because of that, the uh, technicians need to understand what, what occurs and, and how do these IoT devices work and how are they maintained and how do you set them up? And then of course, when you add the IoT in there, now we're getting into issues of cybersecurity because now you're, you're opening your uh, facility to, uh, to the internet and issues with that. So the next slide shows you uh, the, the outline um, that we're recommending in this particular uh, uh, course. Again, focusing on what the pieces and parts are and how the technician um, can review and, and perhaps uh, troubleshoot, find issues if, if those should occur. And then lastly, and I think this question came up on uh, in the chat on the last session about what should a supply chain technician understand about robots? 
in this module, we're, we're, that's what we're trying to get at is, is um, just an overview of sort of the, the common types of robots that are out there, whether you know, they were mentioned uh, AGVs versus AMRs uh, versus fixed arm uh, robotic uh, systems. So there's gonna be covering different types of systems, the hardware that's involved with that. How are these uh, programmed and what level of programming, if any, does the technician need to know? Uh, there are a lot of sensors that were mentioned on these, these robots. That becomes an important part for the technician to understand how these sensors work. And then lastly, um, this slide uh, gives an outline of, of the major topics that were proposed uh, by the industry, par industry partners for this particular module. So with that, um, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Dr. Bob Sampolsky, who's going to talk to us about the introduction to automated warehouse um, course that we have with the e-textbook and changes that have been made based on the new technologies. Yeah, thank you, Ned. Um, before I delve into the textbook, I, I, it probably should be pointed out that each of the um, three partner schools, uh, Central Piedmont, Oakton, and Sinclair had a role in each of the new classes. Sinclair took the lead on the networking, Central Piedmont took the lead in the robotics, and uh, Oakton took the lead on the Internet of Things cybersecurity class. But getting back to the introduction to the automated warehouse, uh, during the first round of NSF funding, uh, the center identified the need for an entry-level course that would survey the necessary skills and the equipment that technicians should have uh, to be hired for supply chain automation positions. Uh, the discussion of the curriculum led to the plans to develop a textbook that was a collaborative development between the National Center for Supply Chain Automation and EMI. Um, the development tool was to use uh, Apple's iBook application, and the book is currently uh, distributed through the iBook bookstore as well as the Google Play uh, store. Uh, it comes in both uh, PDF and iBook formats. Um, there are a number of interactive uh, crossword puzzles, um, exercises based upon the Jeopardy game, as well as links to various YouTube videos, those, those puzzles and games we, we refer to as widgets. Um, and by 2016, we produced a instructor's manual recognizing that you know, this is something that book publishers regularly make available to faculty who adopt their books. And we wanted the book adopted. So the uh, instructor's manual contains sample syllabi, uh, solutions to textbook problems, supplemental um, activities as well. And we have even included some laboratory uh, activities for faculty who adopt the book and have a scheduled lab component um, in their uh, course activities. So <clears throat> this is the uh, overview of the current uh, textbook. Um, basically, the distribution of widgets and labs that we have available are, are displayed in the two right-hand columns. Um, and as we started thinking about you know, adding material to the book, um, we took some liberties to redesign things. You can see that the uh, first three chapters highlighted in yellow are, are relatively short as compared to the other chapters. The, fifth chapter, which uh, surveys uh, material handling equipment is relatively long. And, um, you know, the size of the existing chapter five made it difficult to place the emphasis on robotics that we felt were necessary. And uh, clearly, uh, you know, the Waypoint team made, made uh, a point that, you know, there, or at least somebody in one of the questions made a point that it's no longer optional. Um, and so when we redesigned uh, the book, we wanted to make sure that we featured robotics in its own chapter, um, in addition to the networking and the cyber cybersecurity that would occur later in the book. So um, our redesign of uh, the first three chapters basically squeezed them into one chapter. Um, we updated uh, career awareness materials uh, from the first edition. Uh, we included um, the new M M MSSC uh, cert certified Technician Supply Chain Automation Certificate that uh, Leo Reddy will be talking about later. And a uh, big thank you to Bruce Davidson and helping us uh, develop material for that part of the book. And uh, we included a new widget uh, from wiskonline.com, which I believe was originally a NSF-supported uh, project 
that surveys supply chain management. Um, the material for chapter five was um, large enough that we thought uh, it could perhaps be split into three chapters. Um, the first four sections um, basically survey human driven devices and automated storage and retrieval systems. Um, these are highlighted in yellow on the slide. Um, the areas highlighted in blue focus on uh, maintenance processes and computerized maintenance management software that support ma the maintenance process, as well as some automated inventory tools. And we reserved uh, basically a middle chapter uh, for new material on robotics, which um, we're, we've seen from the Waypoint team how important those things are, and they are uh, actually participating with us to draft that material. The um, new material is coming from, uh, in robotics anyways, is coming from um, Waypoint. I was going to spend uh, some time talking about their lab activity that um, they had focused on for iRobot, but uh, both Jason and Patty ended up talking about that uh, during their conversation based uh, just to remind you that the uh, iRobot website has a, um, a software development environment that can be graphical, but uh, it can also be textual. And by starting with the uh, graphical um, construction, that code can uh, control a virtual screen robot called a root, or you can use a Bluetooth connection and download it to a physical root bot. Um, and by uh, starting at the graphical level, entry level users can proceed to fully textual code um, over a period of time. The uh, predictive maintenance material that will uh, appear uh, in the subset of chapter, what is currently chapter five, is being developed by Mike Grecki of um, Metropolitan Community College in Omaha, uh, Nebraska. And he's working on material that will include the use of sensors. And um, as I said, computerized maintenance uh, management software to aid in productive maintenance. Um, in this area of the book, I, it should be noted that we'll be using centers in areas that include applications ranging from the measurement of wear on devices that indicate a need for maintenance, the automation of inventory, as well as the ability for an autonomous vehicle to negotiate its route across a warehouse floor. So um, the importance of, sensor, of sensors can't be underestimated um, in, in this area of the text. Um, the new chapters in the text uh, have been submitted by uh, Dr. John Sands. He is actually speaking on this agenda later this afternoon from Rain Valley Community College. Uh, John had submitted some lab material from uh, the Tinkercad uh, suite of web pages that's maintained by Autodesk. Uh, Tinkercad was created by uh, Google engineer Kai Beckman to make 3D modeling accessible to the general public, and it supports the design of circuits and Arduino simulations. And our chapter on cybersecurity has been provided by uh, John Romano. John is the assistant director of the Texas A&M uh, Cybersecurity Center. Uh, John has provided a lab activity that uh, features the famous Enigma cipher that was used by a German intelligence during World War II. If you've ever seen the 2014 movie called The Imitation Game, the story is about how this cipher was broken by a group headed up by Alan Turing. Uh, Alan, is, uh, Alan Turing is viewed as one of the founding fathers of modern computing. Basically, the Enigma worked with uh, circular shells that had letters of the alphabet rotating around a cylinder. And John has provided a version of those shells that wrap around a cylinder of a Pringles potato chip container to demonstrate how the code uh, encrypted. And I have to admit, I never thought in my life that I'd ever use the words Pringle and Enigma in the same sentence, but John has done that for me. Um, so our second edition is going to play out uh, kind of this way. Items that are not highlight highlighted are, are basically replicated from the first edition. Uh, items that are highlighted in green represent existing text in the first edition that we're going to rearrange um, and uh, implement into the chapters that I've identified. And then items that are highlighted in blue represent um, 
new material that uh, will be added to the book. And we also have some new widgets and some new laboratories that come into it. And uh, we think that these will provide better support for those faculty who choose to adopt the text. At Oakton, we use this as a, uh, a manufacturing class. Um, <clears throat> we did run into one um, problem in the production of the original book. As I said, we were using iBooks Author. Unfortunately, Apple no longer supports iBooks Author. Um, however, they will continue to support the iBooks Reader. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to use EPUB, which is a international digital publishing forum. Um, it has uh, some readers that are available at no charge. Actually, the majority of things on this list are readers that are available at no charge. Um, and it also has writing tools um, that are available at no charge. Calibre is uh, one of the examples of that. And the important thing of this is that um, after the center sunsets, uh, if the book is going to live on, an EPUB version can be revised with open source tools such as Calibre. And then that way, as the technologies evolve, somebody can pick up and update the book at no cost. Um, this would not be the case with um, either the iBook or the PDF format. So uh, you'd have to you know, pay up. Well, iBook won't be available because Apple won't support it. And to update the PDF format does require a license with um, Adobe. And um, the choice of using EPUB uh, provides us the opportunity to make the book um, editable by um, users who do not have to pay a licensing fee for it. And um, <clears throat> we hope to get the uh, second draft of the uh, textbook available this summer. Um, but we wanted to uh, assure people that the uh, instructor's manual will be updated and uh, hopefully available by fall for those that choose to adopt. Um, basically, we will um, have new lab activities. There will be some new chapter exercises, uh, widget solutions, and there are probably some websites that are valuable since we um, since we started that process. So I think um, at this point, we're ready to respond to any questions that, that folks have. I'd, uh, before we break out, I'd like to thank the panel for um, your work and thank you for your attention. And um, I'll turn it back to Mary. Thank you to all the panelists and thank you, Bob, for that. Um, we do have some questions. I had a couple come in via private mess, private chat. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a couple questions about the LET program. Uh, the first was, what led you to determine the need for the original logistics engineering technology curricula? What, what, what was the initial impetus? I can actually answer that. Um, it basically came from industry pointing out that there was nobody coming out of school that could speak supply chain management theory, engineering, and IT. Um, most of us in the supply chain industry fell into it at some point. Um, we all know theory really well. We probably know some computers well, but I would be willing to bet that most people are like me and don't know a ton about engineering. So when you try to propose a solution to an entire group of people, um, being able to speak the other languages helps. And that's kind of the impetus of where the LET initial curriculum came from. Now, is that is that kind of some of the core differences between the standard SCM program and LET, or can you differentiate those a little? Yeah, so the core program is basically all theory. Um, it can actually be done 100% online because we don't have labs, we don't have, well, we have toys, they're just really big. You can't really bring them in the classroom. Um, and uh, it, it revolves around theory because we know that the, the normal supply chain individual is going to learn a lot on the job. So we want them to have the base theory. Uh, but with the LET part, um, there's some hands on stuff they have to do. Um, so, yeah, that's where it uh, diverges greatly is when they you know, start learning the programming um, and the electronics and stuff like that. OK, terrific. Anybody else want to chime in on that? Chris? No. Good enough. OK, next question. Um, how about the industrial members? Um, what what industry and employer? What, who are your partners and how did you bring them into this fold? In terms of developing sure. LET. I wasn't sure if uh, Professor Banna was going to answer. Um, 
at the original meeting, I wasn't there. Uh, that's been, that was before my time, but I can tell you some of the members that still are supporting the program. Um, we have, um, oh, it's not D, uh, not UPS, but D, DHL. DHL. DHL has been a part of the meeting. Uh, PepsiCo, we had members from, from Pepsi there. The Limited, uh, we had members from The Limited there who, the company that has Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secrets, um, as well as uh, Gap. And we have other supporting members like uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, um, ODW, FST, uh, partners like that, Jeremy may, need, may be able to add some more. Yeah, when the um, initial uh, work was being done for the LET uh, program, um, at the same time, there were other grants uh, that were establishing the modern manufacturing work study program separate from the LET. Um, and that actually came from Honda. Honda approached Columbus State um, and their factory in Marysville. They said, you know, we stood this up and all the people we originally hired are about ready to retire and we, we can't backfill fast enough. Um, and it's just not anybody you can, you can't just hire them off the street and, and, and have them working. Um, so we started partnering with them um, and then their suppliers uh, and then that caught on. So when the LET program came around, we had a pretty well-established base of manufacturers uh, to tap into as well as you know the already cemented logistics industry in Central Ohio. I, I'll uh, comment on um, the Oakton um, Industrial Partners. Uh, back before we were part of the National Center, the state of Illinois asked um, all the community colleges across the state to get involved with um, transportation, warehousing, logistics industry. And Oakton partnered with a um, mid-level RFID um, provider uh, and helped us put together a uh, automated inventory component of our uh, manufacturing area, which um, naturally led us into this LET uh, environment before, again, before we even part of the, uh, the National Center. As we um, progressed through the complete grant, we uh, worked with uh, groups like CDW and, and local networking companies in the Chicagoland area that were attempting to um, understand, you know, what role they could play in that. And perhaps our most interesting partner is uh, Vetter Pharmaceutical, which has a manufacturing site uh, near uh, one of our campuses. And they were actually looking for somebody, not so much to deal with the engineering side, but they had a robotics um, packaging area in one of their aseptic clean rooms. And they were looking for technicians that could help them with their packaging and help maintain the robotics that they had uh, so that their pharmaceuticals could be shipped in an efficient manner. So it's really a wide swath of, of different employers, different industries. You've yeah. got a lot of folks going on. Okay, that's yeah, interesting. I might mention too, from the, the National Center standpoint, uh, from the very beginning, we felt like it was important to have industry um, lead, lead the charge. And um, we created a couple positions. One is uh, an industry liaison, uh, Steve Harrington, fills that position. Many of you have probably worked with, with Steve in the past. And then a um, educational liaison, Beverly Hillebrand. Again, many of you have probably worked with her. Um, so Steve created um, a, an extremely strong industry group. Um, we meet with them fairly often. I think this last um, year and a half, we we met monthly with them for the, for the first six months or so. Uh, we've met with them in different locations around the country. And they really uh, are the folks that have driven the curriculum, uh, the model program that we saw, the introduction to automated warehousing uh, uh, text. In fact, many of them have written chapters in there, like Bob mentioned for the robotics, Jason and and Patty are writing the robotics chapter for that. So um, we feel we feel uh, really proud about having um, the industry lead the, the charge. Uh, the, you know, they're saying to us, this is what we need out of technicians in, in, in these automated uh, systems. Well, that's really, you know, where the rubber hits the road, isn't it? Just mm -hmm. having that communication channel open between the two, it, it really makes a difference, which kind of leads me to my next question, which is what kind of jobs are your LET graduates finding? 
And are they with those same employers? I'm assuming yes, but I'll let you answer. <laughs> Um, not, yeah, with those same employers, but also a lot more. <clears throat> I'm um, thinking of just a few graduates right now. We have one that became a, a, a safety officer for a large uh, transportation company, uh, transportation and warehousing. Another uh, graduate that actually went into the IT department of a logistics company. Um, I uh, we, we now have some students placed with a couple of manufacturers uh, just for their for their modern man manufacturing work study. One company is a, a company that uh, they make food equipment for the food industry, uh, fast slicing equipment. Uh, they make machines and ship them all over the world. And uh, this person will be more of a technician for, for them. Uh, another one actually works for uh, a Lincoln Electric, which is does a lot of distribution for different types of uh, electrical components, and he's going to be their supply chain person. Um, so you know, it's it opens up. I, I always tell the students, you can do anything with this degree from planning, uh, being in purchasing or sales planning, planning your uh, production planning for manufacturing facilities, to working as a technician or a operations analyst in a distribution center or even mid-management mid level uh, with some experience in a distribution mm -hmm. atmosphere. Thanks, Chris. Bob, I see yeah, you. I'll, yeah, I'll mention a couple of uh, other uh, companies nearby. We, you know, from the traditional mechatronics, electronics area, um, we were recruited to send students to, under, I'm sorry, Northrop Grumman, which has a site adjacent to our district, not in our district, the community college that they were in could not provide them with the number of employees that they wanted. And so they, they reached out to us and we were able to help them. Um, but again, that's more of the traditional mechatronics. I mentioned the, uh, the Better Pharmaceutical and, and we also have had some students placed into underwriter, underwriters labs where again, it's more of a traditional mechatronics uh, strategy on how to uh, you know, help the, uh, the scientists at, at that site um, you know, realize the experimentation on, on the devices that they're testing. All right, we're starting to get close on time. I've got two questions left though that I'd like to quickly run by. One was there was a question that came in, um, LET versus SCA technician. The curricula looks close. Can you quickly sketch out the distinction if there is one? Um. The SCA, we're talking about MSSC, the certification track? SCA technician, the question I reads. think the, uh, the model program that we have in the National Center. Uh, oh, okay. Well, do you want to answer that uh, one, Ned? Sure. Yeah, I think the, the, the model program, um, when we, we first began the, the supply chain technician, we were really looking at the, the mechatronics technician or the industrial um, engineered technician. Uh, so that was the, the first model that I showed you. Um, had a lot of, had a lot of uh, mechanics, electrical, hydraulics, pneumatics. Um, over time, with the addition of um, a lot of IT type devices, especially coming in with the, the Internet of, Out of Things devices, um, the cybersecurity, the uh, networking, that's where we kind of looked at what Chris and, and Jeremy had been doing in the, in the LET program and looking at what industry was, was asking for sort of holistically across the nation with the National Center. And that's why we started adding these additional modules, if you will, to the, uh, the supply chain technician uh, 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 model program. We also, in the meantime, and um, there'll be a whole session on this, but as, as many of you know, MSSC uh, has, um, has come out with a, a new uh, technician certification for the supply chain technician. Obviously, the National Center was, was a, a big part of that, MHI, uh, Mahita, uh, and MSSC is sort of the, the manager of that whole. Um, we looked closely at that to see what 
they had determined from an industry standpoint were required. And that's where we started adding some of the networking and, and robotics and, and that, that sort of uh, areas in there. So different, different colleges implement this different. Uh, Chris and Jeremy showed you how you know, Columbus uh, uh, came about with this. Um, Sinclair, we have uh, an automation program for technicians that highlights robotics. Um, and so, so different schools have kind of taken different approaches at it. But I think the, the important part is that these technologies are what we're seeing now in, in automation and in supply and, and logistics. Um, and I think those are gonna become the, the foundational you know, skill sets that these technicians are gonna, gonna need. I don't know if it's, it's as important as how it, how it looks at a particular college or not, but I think what we're trying to get at is what are the, what are the sort of the base skills that are gonna be required of these uh, technicians.